Hello everyone, my name is Madeline and I create knitting content here on YouTube. If this is your first time stopping by my channel and you'd like to see more, or if you're a returning viewer who hasn't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. So in today's video, I'm going to be walking you through all the steps involved in making this cabled cowl. So essentially, I'm going to assume that you know how to knit and purl, and then I'm going to show you each of the additional steps along the way. So what's nice about this pattern is that we're only cabling on a portion of it. So you can see here's one side and the other side. So essentially we're creating this kind of triangle shaped cable on one side and then just purling on the other. And this makes it so that we can learn how to do a cable chart on this cowl, but without having to do the, all the time involved in cabling all the way around it. So essentially we're gonna cable on one portion and then just purl on the other. So down in the description box below, you're gonna find a few things. First, you're gonna find the written version of this pattern. Then you're also gonna find each of the timestamps for each step that I'm gonna go through. So that way you can fast forward or rewind to the specific portion of the video if you're only interested in one part, or if you need to rewind to watch a step again, you know exactly where to go to. The steps I'm gonna go through to make this cow are first, we're gonna do the long tail cast on, then we're gonna join in the round, because this cow is knit in the round, and we're gonna knit some ribbing, then I'm going to go through how to read a cable chart when you're knitting in the round. And we're going to knit this cable chart going through different repeats. Next we're going to go back to our ribbing at the top. And then lastly we're going to do a bind off. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. First starting off with the knitting needles, I'm going to be using a US 7. 24 inch circular knitting needle. You're gonna need one tapestry needle to weave in your ends, scissors to break your yarn. You're gonna need one cable needle. So an alternative to a cable needle is you can use a double pointed needle. So in this project, I'm just gonna use a double pointed needle. You're gonna need one beginning of the round marker. So here I'm using the little bird. And then you're going to need four removable stitch markers because we're going to be moving them as we knit along. So basically what these are, they're just little pins that I can put on or off my work. To make this cowl, I'll be using 300 yards of DK weight yarn. The yarn that I'm using in this tutorial in particular is Chelsea Lux, and it's this beautiful DK tweed yarn. So on each skein, you get 231 yards. And this colorway is peaches and cream. So I end up using one full skein and then part of the second one. So again, you're looking for DK weight yarn. And if you're shopping at a store that uses the number system instead, you're looking for yarn weight number three. The cast on method I'm gonna be showing today is the long tail cast on. So for the long tail cast on, you need to have a tail that's long enough for you to cast on with, because basically, you're gonna carry across your working yarn and your tail as you cast on. So I always like to have extra. So I'm gonna portion off probably a little over two yards. And sorry, ignore all the little bumps in my yarn. I was testing out the pattern with this yarn. And now the first step is gonna to be to make a slip knot. So the way I make a slip knot is I lay the yarn over my hand. I have the working yarn or the yarn attached to the ball coming out on top and then this big tail that I've created coming out the bottom. Now once you do that, you want to grab the strand with your bottom three fingers, and now you want to take the working yarn and go up over then down below your pointer finger, back up to the top, and now repeat that loop one more time. So now I'm going to bring that yarn back down again. So it's essentially like I have three loops around my pointer finger now. I want to take the second loop, bring it up over the first loop, take the new second loop, bring it up over the first loop, and now I want to grab onto the second loop and pull it off my finger. So now I've created a slip knot, and I'm going to place the slip knot onto my needle. You can pull on the tail to tighten it, and now I have the working yarn coming out the back, the tail coming out the front. 
Now to cast on, I'm gonna grab both strands with all of my fingers. And now I'm gonna take my pointer finger and I'm gonna push back on the working yarn. And then I'm gonna put my thumb in between the two strands and push towards myself on the tail. So again, I'm pushing back on the working yarn and pushing towards myself on the tail. And I found too, it helps if I hold the slip knot in place with my other hand, just so that it doesn't go anywhere. Now I wanna angle my palm up towards the ceiling. And now in this portion, I'm gonna be moving the knitting needle to create this long tail cast on. So I'm gonna take the knitting needle towards myself, underneath those front loops, and then I wanna come up the center of my thumb. Now I wanna go back towards my pointer finger, wrap the needle behind that front strand and now I wanna pull that loop that I just picked up through down the loop on my thumb. And now whenever I release, I let go with my thumb and then I pick the yarn back up with my thumb. So again, I have both strands grabbed with my fingers and then I'm gonna go in between the two strands, push back on the working yarn with my pointer finger towards myself with my thumb, angle my palm upwards now I'm gonna to go towards myself and under the loops on my thumb, then come up the center, go back towards my pointer finger, go behind that first strand on my pointer finger, pick it up, and then I'm gonna go down through the loop around my thumb again. And this is the part where I release with my thumb, so I just slide that strand off, and then I just push back again on the tail. So now I have three stitches cast on because the slip knot does count as one stitch. So now I'm gonna continue casting on all the stitches for this pattern. I've now finished casting on and now I need to organize my stitches so I can join in the round. So for this part, you're gonna need one stitch marker. And for this case, it doesn't need to be removable. So here I'm just using this little bird stitch marker. And how I organize my stitches to join in the round is I put my working yarn, the needle with the working yarn on it, so that's the one you just finished casting off on, on the right-hand side, and then my other needle on the left-hand side. And now I just wanna go around this circle and make sure then my cast on edge is always pointing inwards so that it doesn't twist around the needle at all. Okay, so that looks good. And now I'm gonna pick up my needles the exact way they were just laying down. So I have the working yarn on the needle in my right hand and then the one I'm about to knit into in my left hand. I'm gonna place my stitch marker on my right hand needle, the one with the working yarn and then I'm just gonna go right into that first stitch on my left hand needle as this if I'm gonna knit it. So I'm gonna knit two. And then for this round, it's ribbing. So I'm gonna do knit two. And you wanna pull those first two a little tighter, specifically the first one, just to close up any gap that might form. Bring my yarn to the front and work purl two. And this whole round is gonna be ribbing, so I'm gonna continue doing knit two, then purl two, all the way around until I reach the stitch marker. And then this ribbing's gonna continue for one inch. So I'm gonna continue doing the knit two, purl two, round after round, until my work measures one inch from the cast on edge. And the way I typically measure that is I'm gonna go from the bottom of my cast on up until the bottom of the knitting needle. So I'm gonna continue doing knit two, purl two, until that measures one inch. I've now finished my one inch of ribbing and I'm ready for the next step, which is placing the removable stitch markers. So the stitch markers I'm using here are a little bit different than my beginning of the round marker. And these come typically in metal or plastic. I just like the metal ones because I tend to break the plastic ones a lot. So you can just take them onto or off of your work. And here I have them in four different colors. So you can of course use this, all the same color if you'd like to. So I'm just gonna go around my round 
counting like my first stitch as beginning right after the marker. And I'm gonna place each of the four stitch markers where it states in the pattern. So that's gonna be after the 24th stitch, after the 30th stitch, after the 134th stitch, and then after the 140th stitch. And what makes it a little bit easier here is that it's easy to count by the fours because we already have the ribbing in place. So I'm gonna place each of those stitch markers. I have those placed, I'm ready to begin cable chart A. Before I begin showing how to knit this chart pattern, I'm just going to explain real quick how chart patterns work. So this one in particular is written for in the round knitting. So we're going to be reading every row from right to left, and then we're going to read this chart from bottom to top. So this chart in particular has four rows. And then the first section has six stitches, the next section has eight stitches, and then the final section has six stitches. And you'll see we have a repeat in the middle. So first we have SM1, which stands for stitch marker one, because you'll remember we just placed those four stitch markers. So each one of those corresponds to stitch marker one, two, three, and four. So between stitch marker one and stitch marker two, we have six stitches. Then in between stitch marker two and stitch marker three, we're gonna repeat this over and over again, so this eight stitch repeat, until we reach stitch marker three. And then lastly, we're gonna finish off with this six stitches until we get to stitch marker four. So what exactly are we knitting or purling throughout this? The first thing to know is the difference in the colors. So gray here, and then there's white, so the gray is a purl stitch, and then the white is a knit stitch. And there's two different sets of rows going on here. So you'll see in one row, there's a bunch of these diagonal boxes, which I'll go through in a minute. Then the next row has only square boxes. So this row is actually just plain knit and purls. So here we would purl three, knit two, purl two, and then repeat across. And then, on these diagonal boxes, these ones are each different cable patterns. So essentially, you can look each one of these cable patterns up on the final sheet of this pattern, or I've always found it's helpful to just try and read my cable chart because that helps me knit a lot faster. In this chart, there are two different cable stitches. So first we have this one that looks like it's slanting towards the left, and then we have another one where it's slanting towards the right. So the first thing you want to look for whenever you see a cable stitch is how many boxes does it take up? So for example, if we look at this one over here, it takes up three boxes because the full outer, um, basically like the full outer border of this cable stitch spreads across three stitches. And the next thing you want to note is what do you do with the first stitches that you run into? So again, remember that you're knitting from right to left. So the first thing you're gonna run into are these two knit stitches down below. So in this cable, there's one box that's in front, which is this white parallelogram. And then behind that parallelogram, you see this diagonal line and it's all shaded in gray. So the first thing we're gonna to get to are these two knit stitches. And we wanna bring these two knit stitches over towards the left and they're going in front of the purl stitch that's diagonally going behind it. So how we would do this is we'd get to these two knit stitches, we'd slip them onto a cable needle, hold them in the front of our work because we want them to go in front of the purl stitch. We would purl one stitch from our left hand needle and then go back and knit the two stitches from our cable needle. So that's how we would do this first cable. Now on this next one, we're basically doing the same thing, just in the opposite order. So again, we're knitting from right to left. So the first thing we're gonna run into is a purl stitch. And you can see from this cable that this purl stitch is going diagonally behind 
the knit stitches. So we need to take this purl stitch, hold it on a cable needle in the back of our work, knit the next two stitches from our left hand needle, and then lastly purl the one stitch we've been holding on the cable needle. So once we've done that, we've created this second cable symbol. So again, if you ever want to just see the written version of these, each of the symbols is listed on the final page of this pattern, along with the written version of what I was just describing. When you see each of these four stitch markers here, one, two, three, and four, these don't count the beginning of the round markers. So basically what we're doing here is we're starting at the beginning of the round, we're purling, we're going across the cable chart, then we're purling again, and then eventually we end up back at our beginning of the marker round. So to begin the cable chart A portion, the first step is to purl over to our first stitch marker. Once we get to the first stitch marker, we're going to begin doing the chart A. So first I'm just going to purl over to there. Now that I've reached the first stitch marker, I'm ready to begin the cable chart. So first we have two gray boxes, so that's going to be a purl two. Now we have a cable symbol. Now in this cable symbol, we're taking the two knit stitches, moving them in front over to the left, and then we're taking that purl stitch and moving it behind to the right. So for my cabling, I'm just going to use a double pointed needle. So I'm going to take my two knit stitches, hold them in the front of my work, purl one stitch from my left hand needle, and now knit the two stitches that are being held on my cable needle. So that's that first cable. And now I have one purl stitch. I'm going to pass stitch marker two. And now I'm beginning this repeat. So I'm going to repeat these two cable symbols and this whole pattern. So I have a purl stitch, a cable pattern, another cable pattern, and then a purl stitch. And I'm going to continue repeating this over and over again until I get to stitch marker three. So to show this repeat one time, first I'm going to purl. Next, I'm taking the purl stitch and moving it behind to the left and the two knit stitches it and moving them in the front to the right. So since I have the purl stitch first, I'm going to take that purl stitch, hold it on my cable needle in the back, knit two, then purl the stitch on my cable needle. And now again, I have the same cable that I started with. So I'm taking new two knit stitches, moving them in front to the left. Purling one stitch from my left hand needle. And now knitting the two stitches being held on my cable needle. And lastly, I'm going to purl one stitch. So now I'm going to continue doing that until I reach stitch marker three. I'm now at the third stitch marker. I'm just going to pass that one over. And now in this section, it says purl one. And then I need to move the purl stitch behind and the two knit stitches over towards the right. Purl the stitch that's on my cable needle. And now lastly, purl those final two stitches. Now I can pass my fourth stitch marker, and now I just want to 
purl all the way back across until my beginning of the round marker. So now I'm gonna continue knitting across first to my beginning of the marker round for this section. Then I'm gonna purl again until I reach that first stitch marker. And then I'm gonna work row two of this cable chart. And I found that it does help if I highlight the rows as I go across the cable chart, just so that way I remember where I am. So for example, I just finished this first row. So I would just highlight that one right across and then move on to the next row. So I'll catch back up with you once I finish this cable chart and I'm ready to start chart two or chart B. Before beginning cable chart B, I need to reorganize my stitch markers. So starting with my first stitch marker, which is the first one I would reach as I started going across my row, I need to remove this one and move it left four stitches. So I basically wanna take it one, two, three, four. So right at the beginning of these knit stitches where these purl stitches end. This is why it was important to have the removable stitch markers for this project. There's my first one. Now I wanna take stitch marker two and move this one left eight stitches. So that'll take me to right there. So you'll be in between two sets of knit stitches. Now I wanna look at my other side and my stitch markers three and four. So first I'm gonna move four. I'm gonna move stitch marker four to the right four stitches. And now I'm gonna move stitch marker three to the right eight stitches. Great. So now I'm all organized to start cable chart B. We're gonna read cable chart B the same way we read cable chart A. So we're always gonna be reading from right to left and from bottom to top. So this chart has 12 rows in total. And then between stitch marker one and stitch marker two, we have 10 stitches. Between stitch marker two and stitch marker three, we have a repeat and each repeat takes up eight stitches. And then lastly, stitch marker three to stitch marker four takes up 10 stitches. Now there are four new cable symbols that are appearing on this chart. So each one of them, so we have one, two, three, and four. Each one of these cable symbols that's new takes up four stitches instead of three. So if we just look at this one down here in the corner, so it takes up four stitches and it starts off with two knit stitches. They're held in front because these two knit stitches are going in front of the gray and it's going from right to left. Then going behind, we have two purl stitches going behind from the left to the right. So to knit this, we would take two, the first two knit stitches, hold them on a cable needle in the front of our work, purl the next two stitches from our left hand needle, then knit the two stitches from our cable needle. And that's how we would create this cable. Now, this cable is very similar to the one you'll see again up here. The only difference is the box going behind is white on the second one instead of gray. So that just means that we're gonna knit those two stitches instead of purling them. So for this cable up here, you would do hold two stitches on the cable needle in front of your work, knit the next two stitches from your left hand needle, and then knit the two stitches from your cable needle. So that's these two cables. And now we have these two cables. So starting off again with the gray box behind. So this one starts off with gray. So we'd take two stitches, hold them in the back of our work, then knit two stitches from our left hand needle. Then lastly, we would purl the two stitches that we were holding on the cable needle. And now this one does the same thing, just we're knitting those stitches that are being held in the back. So here, we would slip two stitches onto a cable needle, hold them in the back of our work, knit two stitches from our left hand needle, and then knit the two stitches from our cable needle. And again, 
we're gonna read this chart the same way as the previous one. So essentially you can think of it as we have a beginning of the marker round, then we're gonna purl all the way up to stitch marker one. We're gonna work these 10 stitches. Then we're gonna repeat this section over and over again until we get to stitch marker three. We're gonna work the final 10 stitches. Then we're gonna purl. And then eventually we'll reach our beginning of the marker round again. <laughs> I abbreviate them differently. But these are the beginning of the round marker. And the last thing I want to note is how to do this cable right here in the middle, because you'll see it runs right up the middle of stitch marker two, and it also runs right up the middle of stitch marker three. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do this one in just one second. But first I'm going to purl across to my first stitch marker and show you this first cable. Now reach the first stitch marker, so I'm going to slip that. And now this first one has two stitches. I'm gonna hold those first two on a cable needle in the front of my work. Then purl the two stitches that are going behind. Now knit the two stitches that are on my cable needle. Now I need a purl four. And now this next cable takes place right in the middle with my stitch marker. So I'm just gonna have to take out my stitch marker and then put it back in again once I'm finished the cable. So I have two stitches that are going in the back and those will both be knit. And then I have two knit stitches coming across the front. So I'm gonna slide my first two to the back of my work. Take off my stitch marker for a second. Knit the two stitches from my left hand needle. And you can either put your stitch marker back on now or you can add it again later. And now I'm gonna knit the two stitches that are being held on my cable needle. Now the next thing in this pattern is to purl four. And now you'll see again, we only get half of this cable and then basically it says stitch marker three. But really what we're doing is you have half of it here and half of it here. So essentially you can kind of just think of this as you just work this cable and then purl four and then this cable and purl four all the way until you get two stitches before the last stitch marker three and then again you're going to work this cable right in the middle of the stitch marker and keep on going across. So first just let me show you what it looks like in the middle of this, these repeats. So here I need to do two and then finish off the cable. So I'm doing two stitches held in back So I just did that whole four stitch cable. So that four stitch cable I just did counted for one, two, three, four. So now I'm back at the purl four. And this first row really is the most complicated of this cable chart, because it's the only one where basically the cable gets broken up in between the repeat. Um, but after that, there aren't any more cables along the, these lines, so it gets a lot easier. So I just purled four, and now I'm gonna work again my cable all the way across until I get two stitches before stitch marker three. I'm now two stitches before my third stitch marker. So I'm ready to work this final cable. So to do the final cable, I'm gonna take my two stitches, hold them on a cable needle in the back of my work, 
take off my stitch marker, knit the two stitches for my left hand needle, knit the two stitches for my cable needle, and now I need to replace my stitch marker in between those four. You can either do it during or after. Either way works. And now I'm going to continue working across this. So I have purl four and then this final cable symbol, which is purl, or put two, the first two stitches on a cable needle, hold them in the back of my work, knit two from the left hand needle, and then purl the two from the cable needle. And now I'm going to continue working row after row where I do purl, chart, purl, all the way up until I finish row 12. And after that, I have to rearrange my stitch markers again. So I'm going to come back and show you what mine looks like after I've done row 12. I've now finished the first repeat of chart B and I'm ready to move around my stitch markers. So the first stitch marker I'm going to move is stitch marker one. So starting off over here, I'm at the beginning of the round and then I would work across and the first one I would reach is stitch marker one. So I'm going to take that one off and I'm going to move this one left eight stitches. Now I'm going to take stitch marker two and again move that one left eight stitches. So now I should have a total of 10 stitches in between these two stitch markers. Yep. And now on the other side, I'm going to take stitch marker four and I'm going to move that to the right eight stitches. I'm going to take stitch marker three and again I'm going to move that one to the right eight stitches. Now that I've replaced my stitch markers I can begin the cable chart again. So now we're just going to purl all the way across to the new location of stitch marker one, begin the first portion of the chart, then repeat in between stitch markers two and three, and then finally finish in between stitch markers three and four. Then I'm going to knit, or purl, sorry, all the way across again, back to my beginning of the marker round. And I'm going to repeat this cable chart a total of four times. So I just did my first repeat, so I have three additional full repeats of this chart pattern. So I've made quite a bit of progress since I last filmed. And what I've done is I've finished those four total repeats of cable chart B. And again, after each one of those repeats, I reorganized my stitch markers. Then I also did the repeat of rows one through five of cable chart B. So essentially you just stop after you finish row five of that cable chart. And that's the last cable pattern you have to do. Then once you finish that, we just go back to the knit four, purl four ribbing. So when you're doing the knit four, purl four ribbing, you wanna do it all the way around the top you don't just want to do it over here with the cabling. And the nice thing that works out when you do that ribbing is that it's going to line up with your cable pattern. So you'll see we're basically taking the cables back into that ribbing. So down here at the bottom, we took the ribbing and we split it out into the cables. And now we're bringing it all back into the, um, into the ribbing. And up at the top, so this is my knit four, purl four ribbing. So over here I have my knit four. Um, Again, you're gonna do it all the way around. And then I actually did it for about one row shorter than I did on the bottom, just cause I felt that was visually how it lined up. Um, but yes, yeah, so now I've done it for about one inch and now I'm gonna cast off around this whole outer edge. The cast off method I'm gonna be using for this cowl is Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off for ribbing. And this one was created by Jenny Stamen and I'll link to the original Nitty post where they talk about this specific bind off and they give instructions down below in the description box. And this is a great bind off because it's simple yet it looks really nice. It leaves a really clean edge. There was an error with the clip when I filled this on the full cow. So I'm gonna show it again using this small sample. So here I just have my knit four, purl four ribbing. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knit the first stitch. 
Then you wanna do a reverse yarn over. So you wanna go from the back, up over, then down underneath for the yarn over. Then knit the next stitch. Now you wanna pass the first stitch we knitted and the yarn over, up, over, and off. So now we just have one stitch left. Again, our next stitch is another knit stitch. So I'm gonna do another reverse yarn over. Knit one. And now again, I'm gonna pass the previous knit stitch and the yarn over, up, over, and off. And I'm gonna repeat that reverse yarn over, knit one, slip the two off, until I've completed all the knit stitches. So I just finished all those knit. Now I have a purl stitch next. So for the purl stitches, you wanna do a regular yarn over. So just start underneath, go up over the top, and then back to the front. Purl one. And now again, pass the previous two up over and off. Now we're gonna do a regular yarn over. Purl one. Pass the previous two up over and off. And you're gonna continue doing this, either knit stitches or purl stitches, all the way across the entire round until you reach the end, and then I'll show you what to do once you reach the final stitch. Now once you reach the very end, you're gonna keep on working until you have one stitch left and it's just on your right needle. And now what I usually do is I just pull in my right needle so the loop becomes a lot bigger. And now I thread the full ball of yarn through that loop to secure it. Now I'm gonna cut my yarn leaving a tail and then usually I use that tail to tighten up that little edge just so it smooths out. So here is my finished cowl. I'm now gonna weave in all my ends and block it as well. Or not really block it, I'm just gonna wash it in some cool water and then lay it flat to dry. And I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Here's my finished cowl and I love how it turned out. So down here at the bottom, we have my cast on edge, and then up here at the top is my bind off. And you can see the benefit of that bind off that we use is how stretchy it is. If you wanted a little bit tighter of a bind off, you would just wanna omit the yarn overs in between and just do the traditional bind off. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And I also wanted to mention, if you wanted to make this any longer, so that way you could do a double loop you're just gonna wanna add on stitches in multiples of eight. So basically you're gonna place all the stitch markers in the same places, just add on however much further you'd want in multiples of eight, and that way you can make it longer without having to adjust any of the cables. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you'd like to see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.